I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your support. Hey y'all, it's Kay from The Literary Apothecary and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing round two of the best reads of 2022, Battle of the Books. I took the results from round one and plopped them into our brackets to get round two's matchups. So I'm just going to jump right in here. Um, I'm going to try to not talk about books as much if I already talked about them in round one. However, if you've seen this before, you know that sometimes I just can't help myself. I should also say that the same rules apply as in round one. Five star, five star rates against the lesser rates automatically move on. We have no rereads, no DNFs, nothing below three stars here. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's just get right in. Um, so our first matchup is The Restaurant at the End of the Universe by Douglas Adams versus The Embroidered Book by Kate Hartfield. Now, this is a five-star matchup. We're going to have a lot of these going forward now. Um, y'all know I'm the five-star strumpet, so I give a lot of books five stars. Um, this one, so Restaurant at the End of the Universe is book two in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy series. And the embroidered book was that historical fantasy book I read in December that I absolutely loved. Um, I am going to give this round to the embroidered book by Kate Hartfield um, and say farewell to the hilarious, fantastic, the restaurant at the end of the universe. Our next matchup is Mope is My Wash Pot by Stephen Fry versus Jade War by Fonda Lee. Now, now this is one of those matchups where we have a book that got an automatic buy in the first round and went straight to the second round with Mope is My Wash Pot by Stephen Fry. This one I'm going to give to Jade War by Fonda Lee because Fonda Lee's writing is just so fantastic. But let's talk a little bit about Mobe is My Wash Pot by Stephen Fry. I absolutely love Stephen Fry and this book was like taking a dip into his mind. It was crazy. It was chaotic. It was confusing at times. Um, incoherent at times. But like I said, like taking a snippet in his mind, like having a conversation like I imagine with Stephen Fry. I gave this one three out of five stars. Um, and so that's the end of the road for Mob is my wash pot. Our next matchup we have House of Salt and Sorrows by Aaron A. Craig versus Of Books and Bagpipes by Paige Shelton. Now this is another one that got um, automatic buys into round two. This one I'm going to advance House of Salt and Sorrows by Aaron A. Craig. So we'll learn more about that later um, and say... I loved everything about of books and bagpipes, except for the cover, which didn't even have bagpipes on it. And that's why I read it as part of the Reindeer Readathon for the covers that I don't like, because if you have bagpipes in the title, you gotta have it on the cover. Come on, people. Our next matchup includes Disney in Shadow by Ridley Pearson versus Augustus by John Williams. This is another one of those that is an automatic move on for Augustus because I gave that five out of five stars. And Disney and Shadow, this is the end of the road for you. This was book three in the Kingdom Keeper series, part of my books my boyfriend gave me series. Um, and this had a unique, good plot, lots of adventure, and I liked the use of the teenagers in this story. A lot of times if you have teenagers as a protagonist, they tend to be very juvenile and but also adultish. Um, you don't get that teenage personality or their teenage mistakes, but they use, uh, Ridley Pearson used that really well in this book. Um, but I only gave this four to five stars, so Augustus gets an automatic win on that round. Our next matchup, we have The Collected Schizophrenia's versus Sundial by Katrina Ward. Collected Schizophrenias by Esme Wang, Wei Young Wang gets an automatic move on for five stars. Um, Sundial by Katrina Ward was one of our Wine and Crime Book Club books. 
Um, I gave that one three and a half out of five stars. Something just fell flat for me. It was one of the weirdest books that I've ever read. Um, and I think a lot of the stuff that I was confused about and didn't like was done on purpose by the author. It was really what it did the best in, in my opinion, was making the reader feel the emotions that the characters were going through. The conveyance of those emotions were fantastic. Um, but that's the end of the line for Sundial. Our next matchup, hopefully this video will go a little bit quicker than the last one since we have a little bit less to do. Disney After Dark by Ridley Pearson versus The Year Before the End by Vider Hoekstead. Now this is going to be an interesting one because these, both of these books, I gave three out of five stars. Um, Disney After Dark, I believe was book three two in this series, the Kingdom Keeper series. The year before the end was book one in that series. Um, I'm going to give this one to Disney After Dark because I feel like the problems that I had with this book were not the book itself necessarily, but because I read it out of order. I started with the last book and then went forward. Um, and so I'm going to give this round to Disney After Dark. The year before the end, um, it was all right, but also kind of forgettable to me. So that's why I chose Disney After Dark over the year before the end. Next up, we have another five-star battle, The High King's Tomb by Christian Britton versus Middle Game by Shauna McGuire. Although The High King's Tomb redeemed the Green Rider series for me, this was book three in that series, and I did give it five out of five stars. This round has to go to middle game because that book was so well written, and I keep think, still think about it today. Next up, we have Asphalt Fields by Karen Travis versus The Fortunes of Perkin Warbeck by Mary Shelley. So this is an interesting one because, so Asphalt Fields is book one in the Gears of War series. And although it was intriguing, the flashbacks were really confusing to me and it read too much like a video game and not like a novel. Um, so I gave that three out of five stars. The Fortunes of Perk and Warbeck, I gave four and a half out of five stars. Um, I'm going to advance The Fortunes of Perk and Warbeck on this one because I felt like that was truly a better written book in Asphalt Fields. And our next matchup, we have Green Rider by Christian Britton versus The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. Um, this one is an automatic move on for The Bear and the Nightingale because that one's five stars. The Green Rider is, I gave four and a half out of five stars, so almost five stars. And this is one of the few books that were technically a reread for me, but I didn't remember reading it while I was re the first time, um, Josephine actually pointed out that I only gave it like two, two and a half stars the first time I read it. I don't even remember reading it, so I don't count it as a reread. Um, I enjoyed it much more on the second ride than I did on the first read. It was a wild and unexpected ride and the horse I absolutely loved. He was my favorite character. But that's the end of the road for Green Rider. Our next matchup, we have Suzanne Starry for Nicholas by James Patterson versus Guns of the Dawn by Adrian Tchaikovsky. This is an automatic move on for Guns of the Dawn since that was five stars. Suzanne Starry for Nicholas, I gave four out of five stars. This was a patron pick for me. And it was surprising to me. It had unexpected romance from James Patterson. It made me cry a little bit and it had a little bit of suspense, but it was just missing something to make it that five-star read for me. Next up, we have Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado versus First Writer's Call by Christian Britton. Um, this one, I'm going to move on Her Body and Other Parties. Uh, First Rider's Call was the low so far in the Green Rider series. This is the second book in the series and I almost DNF this series because of this book. It was such a slow start and it really just couldn't keep my interest, which is rare in books. So that's the end of the road for First Rider's Call. Our next matchup, we have Jade Legacy by Fonda Lee 
versus the Ember Blade by Chris Wooding. This is an automatic move on for Fonda Lee with five stars. The Ember Blade was another patron pick for me. Um, I gave this one three and a half out of five stars. I enjoyed the story and the characters, but it felt like it was a far too long. It was too big of a book and it even felt a little boring at times to me. I felt like some bits could have been cut out and we'd still have the same story. So that's the end of the road for the Ember Blade. Our next matchup is Just Last Night by Mariri McFarlane versus Petals on the Wind by VC Andrews. Um, this is an automatic move on for Just Last Night with five stars and the end of the road sadly for Petals on the Wind felt like this book in this series so far, the writing is good. It makes you feel those feels, but it's just so creepy. I can't say that I enjoyed the book. I enjoyed the writing because it's just so creepy, but the writing, I can't knock the writing because it was written technically very well. Our next matchup is A Handful of Souls by Stephen Rice versus Fractured by Gordon Bauman. Now this is two self-pub books that I read towards the end of the year last year. Um, who am I going to move on? This is a tough one. I think I'm going to move on A Handful of Souls um, by Stephen Rice. Even though it was ranked a half a point lower than Fractured, it just had something a little extra for me when I think about it. Um, Fractured had solid characters, a great storyline, great action, and I kept thinking about it as I was reading it. I wanted, I didn't want to stop reading it. This is book one in a telepath series, and sadly, this is the end of the road for Fractured. Our next matchup, we have The Last Man by Mary Shelley versus The Good Neighbor, The Life and Work of Fred Rogers by Maxwell King, narrated by LeVar Burton. This is a five star matchup and this is going to be a tough one for me. Um, I think I'm going to move Mary Shelley on and say so long farewell to Fred Rogers. Um, the Good Neighbor was what I appreciated the most about this biography was that it was a true representation of Fred Rogers. We got the good and we got the bad of Mr. Rogers life. Um, and of course, it was narrated by LeVar Burton, who I just love so much. And next up, we have Blood Curse by Tamara Lowry versus Interview with the Vampire by Anne Rice. This is an automatic move on for Interview with the Vampire for five stars. Um, but I loved the Blood, Blood Curse by Tamara Lowry so much. I gave it four and a half out of five stars, so almost five stars. It's got vampires, it's got pirates, it's got vampire pirates, mermaids, sirens, witches. It's got like all of the myths together. I absolutely loved it so much and I can't wait to read the rest of the series, hopefully sometime this year. Um, but sadly, it was not five stars, so that's the end of the road for that one. Our next matchup, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy verse by Douglas Adams versus Lord John in the Private Matter by Diana Gabaldon. This is an automatic move on for The Hitchhiker's Guide for five, five out of five stars. Lord John, I gave this one four out of five stars. Um, this was a historical mystery and it was a great writing by Diana Gabaldon, our Outlander author. It had an interesting glimpse into the gay lifestyle in colonial England and although I really enjoyed it, it was not five star worthy, so it's the end of the road for that one. Okay, our next matchup is, we'll say, a matchup of Strange. The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss versus Strangers in The Promised Land by Jim Wilborn. This one is an automatic move on, sadly, for The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter with five out of five stars. We'll hear more about that in the next round. Um, Strangers in the Promised Land was Jim Wilborn's new novella in the um, Continua Chronicle series. I gave this one four and a half out of five stars, so it was almost five stars. 
I thought the characters were great and it was a great use of the novella format, um, but there's just something really small that was missing to give it five out of five star. Next up, we have A Natural History of Dragons by Marie Brennan versus Blue Haven by Lisa King. Ooh, this one is so hard. Ah, I gave both of these five out of five stars and I loved these both so much. We've got a kind of a, definitely a fantasy, but with it maybe like a historical feel with a natural history and a sci-fi thriller with Blue Haven. This is really hard. Um, I'm gonna come back to this one when I'm done because I can't decide right now. Uh, our next matchup we have The Space Between Worlds by Micaiah Johnson versus Redon by Brandon Sanderson. This is an automatic move on for The Space Between Worlds. Um, Redon was one of the novellas in the Skyward series by Brandon Sanderson. I gave that one four out of five stars. I enjoyed it, but it was hard for me to get into Alanik's narrative voice. And so that's why I gave it four out of five stars. Um, our next matchup, Bruno Chief of Police by Martin Walker versus Razorblade Tears by S.A. Crosby. This one goes to Razorblade Tears because that book I just can't stop thinking about. Um, although I did love Bruno Chief of Police, that was another patron pick for me. Um, I gave that one five out of five stars. It was endearing with a crazy unexpected twist, um, but sadly does not compare to Razorblade Tears. Next up we have The Seventh Cadence by Jim Wilborn versus The Heart is a Lonely Hunter by Carson McCullers. I'm going to give this one to The Seventh Cadence by Jim Wilborn and say I gave four out of five stars to Heart is a Lonely Hunter. I enjoyed the, it was a compelling story, realistic fiction, um, literary fiction. I enjoyed the narrative style, but it just was missing something to give it that edge to five stars. Our next matchup is Waking Ursa Minor by Helen Rigg Peterson versus Sunreach by Brandon Sanderson. This is another five star matchup. Um, this one I'm going to advance Waking Ursa Minor again because that book was just, I just love that book so much and Helen has become a good friend and Waking Ursa Minor, if y'all haven't read that yet, you gotta read that book. Sunreach was, uh, another novella in the Skyward series. I loved every minute of this book and the characters discovering that the slugs are important in their universe. I can't say much more without giving away spoilers, but I loved everything about this, but it does not be out Waking Ursa Minor for me. Next up we have The Violent Conspiracy by Brennan Slocum versus The Insider by Ridley Pearson. This one is an automatic move on for The Violent Conspiracy with five out of five stars. The Insider was book seven in the Kingdom Keeper series, but the first book that I read in that series, this was part of my books my boyfriend gave me series, actually the first book in that entire video series. Um, because I read the first, the last book first, some parts were naturally confusing. There were unexplained parts that were then explained earlier in the series, but the premise behind this book was so unique and I think the part that I loved most about this book was that Ridley Pearson created this online forum for his fans where he could put in different plot points of the book and have readers give their points of view on it, give their ideas for it. He took exact writing from some um, readers. He took paraphrased some things that they said and put it straight into the book and gave them credit in the book and that I don't think I've ever seen done before so that was really unique but not enough to beat out the violent conspiracy. I gave the insider four out of five stars. Our next matchup is The Winter of the Witch by Catherine Arden versus Lancelot by Giles Christian. This one is another automatic move on for The Winter of the Witch. Another five star read. Um, Lancelot was, had beautiful prose. This is book one in the Arthurian Tales series. It's an Arthurian legend retelling all about, of course, Lancelot. We had our great characters, our staple characters, Lancelot and Guinevere and Arthur and Gawain. Um, 
great storyline and a great twist on the legends um, and awesome world building, but it was only four and a half out of five stars. So it's the end of the road for Lancelot. Uh, next up we have Father Goret by Balzac up against Red Rising by Pierce Brown. This is a battle of the four star books. Um, I'm going to give this one to Red Rising by Pierce Brown. Father Goret, while I appreciated the humor in it, um, I wanted more of that humor. It, we had a lot of the humor at the beginning and then it kind of got more and more serious. It had a good plot, but it just needed more of that humor. Okay, slowly coming down to the end. Power Play by Ridley Pearson up against 12 Blades in Contempt by Jordan Jarrett. Um, this one I'm going to give to 12 Blades in Contempt and say Power Play by Ridley Pearson. This was book four in the Kingdom Keeper series. I gave this one three and a half out of five stars. I thought it was decent, decently well written. If that's even a phrase but kind of forgettable. I kind of don't remember what happens in this exact book. Next up, we have Anathem by Neil P. Stevenson versus Ink and Bone by Rachel Kane. This one's gonna go to Ink and Bone by Rachel Kane. Anathem, I was surprised by how much I enjoyed this book. Although I gave it three out of five stars, it was really, really long and took me a long time to get through. I had no idea what happened through most of the book um, I was completely lost, but I also had a good time at it too, and it made me crave scones. Um, and it had a pink dragon that farted nerve gas, which was just made me laugh. Um, I was surprised by how much humor was in this book. But that's the end of the road for Anathem. Next up we have Mathilda by Marie Shelley versus the folklore of Discworld, Legends, Myths, and Customs from the disc world with helpful hints from planet earth this one is a automatic move on for disc worlds with five stars and the end of the road for mathilda although i gave this one four out of five four point five out of five stars i thought the amount of emotion conveyed in this book was so well done mary shelley is a master about conveying the emotions of her characters to her readers uh okay our next matchup, we have just a couple left. The Girl in the Tower by Catherine Arden versus Flowers in the Attic by V.C. Andrews. This is a automatic move on for The Girl in the Tower by Catherine Arden. And um, End of the Road for Flowers in the Attic. The writing, the prose was very, very good. I felt the terror in this book. This is the first book in the Flowers in the Attic series, also called the Dollinger Children's series. Um, lots and lots of trigger warnings for this book that weren't necessarily placed in the beginning of the book before you started it but i only gave this four and a four out of five stars so up against a five star it's the end of the road although if it was up against some other books it would definitely have won two matches left jonathan strange and mr norwell by susanna clark versus shell game by ridley pearson this is an automatic move on for jonathan strange for five out of five stars. Um, Shell Game was number five and it was very exciting with a cliffhanger at the end. And again, very unique. I gave that one four and a half out of five stars and maybe my favorite book out in, in the whole series. I thought that one was just so well done, but went up against a five star. So it has to be an automatic end of the road for Shell Game by Ridley Pearson. Um, next up, we have Escaping First Contact by T.S. Byer versus The Legend of Blackjack by A.R. Witham. This is an automatic move on for Blackjack with five out of five stars. And the end of the road for Escaping First Contact, which I gave four out of five stars. I really enjoyed this sci -fi, I think it was like a sci-fi thriller type of book. Had great pacing and great characters, but only four out of five stars. So the end of the road to that. So now we circle back to the one that I couldn't decide on earlier. Um, Blue Haven by Lisa King versus A Natural History of Dragons. I think I have to give this to A Natural History of Dragons because I just loved that book so much. Um, but seeing as I had to come back to this matchup, y'all know how much I must have loved both of these books. Blue Haven 
was something very, very unique that I read. It was a sci-fi thriller with tons of twists and turns that left me thinking about it for days after I read it. And I recommend this to anyone who says that they're looking for a good sci-fi thriller because this was so, such a wild ride, but the end of the ride for Blue Haven. So that's my round two of the battles of the books from 2022. As always, let me know in the comments below what you guys agreed with, what you disagreed with, what decisions would you make differently? Um, and if you have any predictions for round three, we'll be back next week with round three in the battles of the books. As always, my Patreon and my Discord information will be in the description below. There is no pressure to join either, but we have a ton of fun at both. Keep reading and I love you all to the moon and back. Bye.